SCP-1315 Object Class Safe Special Containment Procedures SCP-1315 is kept in a secure storage at Site-15. It is stored within a small safe on premises, the code to which can be requested via a written application from Dr. As SCP-1315 will not exhibit any anomalous effects unless directly interacted with, no further containment is necessary. SCP-1315's Description Item SCP-1315 is what appears to be a standard 5.5 by 4.1 inch video game cartridge for use with the North American version of the Nintendo Entertainment System console, also known as the NES. The cartridge is manufactured out of gray plastic and is unlabeled. According to an operation manual packaged with the cartridge, the game is entitled Professor Ghoul's Terrifying Horror Challenge and is accompanied by a subtitle reading a realistic high-stakes action game for one to two players. When the cartridge is used in a Nintendo Entertainment System, a black screen appears containing nothing but a simple menu with the option of a single or a two-player mode. Pressing the Start button on either of the options advances to another screen where the game asks to confirm whether the persons currently holding the game controllers are those who wish to play the game. If the No option is selected, the game will return to the Mode Select menu. Selecting Yes prompts the game to beep loudly and then display a blank red screen. Nothing more will happen on screen after this point. At this point, the game will begin, and the players of the game will be subjected to a series of increasingly horrific challenges that apparently manifest in the physical world. While players will report being chased by monsters from within the game, it appears to the best of the Foundation's knowledge that these elements of the game are only visible to the players, and do not exist for other people who happen to be in the same area. The challenges involve players escaping from or combating hostile creatures over a series of levels. Each time a challenge is won, the game will inform the player of the objective for the next, and then the game will continue. The game's manual claims the fun never ends, and does not specify how many challenges must be completed to win the game, if it can be won, though D-Class personnel who have played the game thus far managed to reach level 33. Once the game has begun, it cannot be halted until the players either win or are defeated. Turning the Nintendo Entertainment System off simply renders the players unable to receive hints from the game, and physically leaving the area in which the game is set up simply causes the phenomena manifested by the game to follow the players elsewhere. Those playing the game grow gradually more distressed as the challenges continue until they report that the game has become too hard for them and they are captured by the enemies within the game, which prompts the game to end and the players disappear. It is not currently known where the players are taken upon losing the game. Additional Materials Test Log 1315-1 It appears that the content of the game is static and does not change on subsequent playings. Different players have reported similar events occurring on certain levels, though there does appear to be some element of randomness as some slight variations have been observed. Level 1 A large number of either spiders, rats, or various insects attempt to overwhelm the player. A large container of insecticide or rodent poison appears somewhere within meters of the player's location. The player wins this level when the vermin are destroyed. Level 3 A group of two to six wild animals, made up of any composition of bears, wolves, or large cats, attempt to eat the player. The player must survive for one hour. A shotgun and an accompanying box of rounds appear within meters of the player's location, but using it to kill any of the animals causes two more animals of the same species to appear within five minutes. Level 7 The player's location is assaulted by either one or two hostile men armed with weapons ranging from machetes and axes to a chainsaw and on one occasion a firearm. The player must survive for either one hour or kill the attackers, though no weapons are provided for this purpose. Level 9 A group of two to five armed men, supposedly resembling a random group of authority or a local police force known to the player, converge on the player's location and attempt to apprehend them. The player wins the level by resisting capture for a period of two hours. A loaded firearm appears within meters of the player's location, but using it to kill any of the attackers causes the remaining gunmen to call for backup, which arrives within the next ten minutes. Level 12 an unseen but hostile force attacks the player's location, capable of manipulating physical objects including the player. 
Three random objects, which are usually reported to be documents, photographs, or ornaments owned by a previous player, appear within meters of the player's location and level is one when the player finds them all and burns them. Level 16, a group of four to eight humanoids, reported to physically resemble past users of SCP-1315, attempt to kill the player. The attackers are not armed but will immediately proceed to fashion makeshift weapons out of nearby objects to harm the player with. The attackers can pass through solid objects and can move at a startling speed. A random weapon, usually a firearm but occasionally a bladed weapon or in one case a pair of binoculars, appear within meters of the player's location. And the level is one when the player uses his weapons to destroy the attackers. Level 18. An entity strongly resembling SCP appears at the player's location. The player must survive for one hour to win the level. Due to the nature of the attacker in this level, the challenge is easier for two players than a single player. Level 20. As the level begins, the player finds himself subdued in what appears to them to be a windowless stone room. A man of unknown entity enters the room and subjects the player to a randomly chosen form of torture. The player wins the level if they can withstand the torture for 30 minutes without submitting to the torturer. Level 23 The player perceives himself to be stranded in a dense forest. A number of creatures of indeterminate nature hunt the player, who must escape to a wooden shack kilometers from their starting location. Entering the shack returns the player to their original location and ends the level. Level 27. The player perceives themselves to be in what is reportedly a rundown urban area, in darkness. A number of shadow entities attack the player if they move too fast or make too much noise. The player's objective is to proceed to an area kilometers from their starting location, where they will find a weapon which they can use to destroy the entities. The level is won when the entities have been destroyed. Level 28. Entities resembling relatives and people of some importance to the player appear at the player's location. All entities are subdued in a matter that they pose no danger to the player. The player wins the level by killing the entities with a supplied weapon. This level has caused severe distress in all D-Class personnel who have tested the game, as the player's victims reportedly address the player personally and appeal to events that are known to the people the victims in this level resemble. Level 29. The player perceives themselves to be on the top floor of an outer tower of a medieval-style castle that overlooks an expanse of forest. A heavily armed, extremely hostile attacker calling himself the Professor chases the player and attempts to kill them. The player must find keys which are randomly hidden throughout the castle, then escape from the castle grounds to win the level. Level 31 The player is on a vast island containing the remains of what appears to be an abandoned military complex, a small urban area, a network of underground tunnels, and patches of dense forest. The player is pursued by the attackers from level 29, as well as a group of three to six humanoid attackers resembling the victims from level 28, who all move faster than the player and appear to communicate with telepathy. The player's goal is to survive for 24 hours. At every third hour, two to four additional humanoids, who take on the appearance of past players, materialize within the game zone. The player is not provided with any weapons, though one D-Class operative reported being able to stun an attacker by hurling a large rock at its head. It reportedly recovered within 30 seconds, though this gave the operative enough time to escape. Level 33 Test Log 1315-2 Several tests have been conducted with SCP-1315 in an attempt to determine the origins and extent of its anomalous properties. 12-10-1986 Game is run, but no option is selected from the main menu. Nothing happens, game remains on opening menu until option is chosen. 11-11-1986 Single player option is selected using mechanical factory arm to manipulate controller. Game determines D-Class personnel operating mechanical arm to be the player. Game begins as normal. 9-12-1986 Above test is repeated, this time using pre-programmed probe robot to manipulate controller. Game refuses to advance past player confirmation screen. 12-2-1987 NES is turned off during a game, and then an attempt is made to turn it on again. Console fails to turn on. 21-2-1987 SCP-1315 is removed from NES during a game with the console remaining on. Console does not turn off, red screen remains, and players report still being able to receive messages from the game. 8-3-1987 
Above test is repeated, but SCP-1315 is then inserted into a different NES console and the power is turned on. Game refuses to start. 1906-1988 Foundation researchers attempt to interfere with the game providing weaponry and supplies to the player. D-Class personnel report that provided weaponry becomes jammed or breaks when used against game enemies. 3106-1988 Above tests are repeated but weapons are left in the player's vicinity when the game begins, rather than being given during game progress. Player reports being able to use weapons without penalty. Researchers come to the conclusion that objects already present in the environment upon game start are incorporated into the game. 2005-1996 Foundation researchers attempt to access game code stored on SCP-1315 cartridge. Kilobytes of data found present on chip. Data appears to be corrupted and cannot be accessed. 3505-1996 Game data is dumped onto a computer and copied onto a second cartridge. Second cartridge exhibits similar anomalous properties to original cartridge. Duplicate cartridge is destroyed. Copying of the cartridge is banned. 2809-1999 Dumped ROM data is opened and played on a PC-based NES emulation program. Game fails to start. Testing is henceforth suspended until further developments can be discovered. History SCP-1315 was recovered from a computer and video game store in on 11-04-1986, after an employee of said store attempted to burn the establishment down in an effort to destroy SCP-1315, which he and a friend had used during a down period some days prior. Said employee was arrested by the police department and held in custody. Although those on duty reported that he had not been released from his cell, he supposedly vanished and is still missing. As of other employees of the video game store were interviewed, though it has been determined that none of them possessed any knowledge of SCP-1315 or its origins. Excerpt from Operation Manual Included with SCP-1315 cartridge on recovery. And it says here, Professor Ghoul's Terrifying Horror Challenge is a realistic and scary action game that the entire family can enjoy. The manic Professor Ghoul invites all comers to test their mettle, wit, and strength in his fantastic challenge. Do you have what it takes to be victorious? Playing the game is easy. All you have to do is choose whether you want to go it alone or with a friend and do whatever it takes to survive level at the level of horrifying action and adventure. Once you've started the game, you can play it anywhere. Home, in town, at school, wherever Professor Ghoul's spooky creations find you. The fun never ends. Be careful, though. Professor Ghoul is a man of honor, and once you decide to take on the challenge, you can't stop until someone emerges the victor. Manage to get through with all your body parts intact, and you'll be the coolest kid in town. Lose, however, and you'll be at the mercy of Professor Ghoul. There are no extra lives in Professor Ghoul's terrifying horror challenge, and no second chances. Get game over, and you're done.